Matthew chapter 28, verse 16. And I know you've probably got your Bibles marked. As long as I've been here, I've no doubt preached on this numerous times. If I stay here very long, I'll get into this passage of Scripture again somewhere. If I don't, one of the others will. Amen. Matthew 28, 16. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Now let's look at verse 20 again. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Thank you for standing for the reading of the word. If I could preach for a little while this morning, I'd like to preach on the thought of what side of the street are you on? Right. What side of the street are you on? Now, when Jesus told these disciples to go teach all nations whatsoever he had commanded them, do you realize none of them had been to seminary? No, they had they had been with Jesus. Right. And that's what they needed. Yes, sir. I've got no, no problem with further education. But I do whenever they're educated and not been with Jesus. Amen. And that's, that's my situation there. Right. Most of those men, Brother Odell, the fishermen, especially what I've read about them, they had no education at all other than what their mother taught them, how to read and write and do some small arithmetic problems. They don't call it arithmetic anymore. Whenever I was a kid, I had a problem spelling arithmetic. I had such a problem, I had a problem spelling. I just had a problem with that. And my uncle said, that's no problem. Just say a rat in Tom's house, eat Tom's ice cream. And so I learned how to spell arithmetic. Amen. And so, you know, it, 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 it just, they just learned some, some simple math problems and things like that. And that's the most education they had. But when Jesus called them, he educated them. Amen. Now, I, I, I've told you this before, and I don't want to linger around, just ramble on. I would have liked to went to Bible school. I really would have. I would have liked to went to Bible school and graduated. Amen. My first pastor, after I started preaching, knew I needed it so bad that he said, is there any way that you can go to Lee Bible College? I said, brother, I've got a family to feed. There's no way I can quit my job and go to Tennessee and enroll in Bible College. Amen. So, I, you know, he recognized that I needed it. I knew I needed it. Amen. But I don't need Reverend Sidney Sparks, D.D., or Doctor in Divinity. I need to be with Jesus. Amen. And when we will get with Jesus, we will pretty much find out what this is talking about. Amen. And if we don't, brother, you and one of us help the other. Yep. Praise God. Are you helping me preach here a few minutes? Right. Amen. But it seems like that there's a revolving door syndrome in the churches today. Moving in and out of the churches. There's a national poll <clears throat> that churches are not making much progress in recruiting new members. Now, would you take notice at the, at the things that's been said here? Right. Churches are not making much progress in recruiting new members. The poll also stated that many professing members are woefully ignorant of the basic facts of Christianity. 
Now I know I'd like to be preaching full blast, but I've talked to the Lord just during the song service. Lord, if you want the wind to blow, blow it. Yep. But I'll be glad. But if you want to let it settle down, let me preach. Amen. Sow some seed, then let me do that. Right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And uh, that's the poll that was taken. Now, personally, I don't much like that word recruiting. Are we recruiting new members? No. Or are we making the, preaching the gospel and making new converts? Right. Amen. That's where we need to be looking right. at the terminology here. Amen. Not recruits. The military recruits. Amen. Amen. But we're not recruiting. We're taking the gospel to make new converts. Yeah. Amen. And making converts is essential. But I've said this before in Sunday school classes that I've taught from here, amen, and messages that I've preached from here, that making the converts is not where we stop. No. Because that's the problem. That's the reason there's so much easy believism and not even fingernail deep in any type of theology in the scripture. Amen. It's because we've stopped with conversion Amen. and we've not dealt with discipleship. Right. Amen. And then when we do deal with discipleship, just like Brother Yule said here this morning, it's so easy that the preacher gets up here and he used me for an example, Brother Mitchell and Brother Odell, but he also gets up here and teaches from this. Right. And we can look at what the Bible's specifically says and then it's easy to sit back and say well I don't agree with that right? and I don't know how many times that I have listened to a preacher preach and listened to him and mistook something that he said amen are you helping me preach right. but let's look at what the Bible says and when the Bible's talking to us amen it's our turn now after we've accepted the grace of God after we've repented of our sins after we've been converted, that means we've been turned around. Right. Amen. We've been turned around. Now we're listening to the word of God that we can become a disciple of Christ Amen. and not spend the rest of our time just being a convert. Amen. Now Jesus said in Matthew 16 and 24, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up the cross and follow me. And I want to say it this way today. There is no such thing as a casual believer. Amen. That's what's grabbing the whole church world today. All right. Just casual believers. I worked for the, at the funeral home 35 years ago. Maybe almost 40 now. More like 38. But anyway, I worked there. And uh, two of them were preachers. The owner and one that worked there were preachers. The other one that came and went, he wasn't a preacher. And I'm going to be honest with you, they're all dead now. But uh, he was just always spent his lifetime drinking fighting, carousing, just doing whatever. But later in his life, he got saved. And, uh, but he wasn't faithful to church. If it's bingo going on, you found him at the bingo place. He told me one time when he was working and, and uh, was in the cemetery setting monuments, he said, I pay my tithes every week and I send them by my wife. One day while he was in the office there, his brother, which had been a pastor and was a preacher, and the owner of the, uh, of the place where we were working, he called him by his name and he said, he said, God does not call us just to be free agents. To do what we want to do, go where we want to go. Help me here. Right. Amen. Now he's the only one been able to lay into him that way, but I, I knew him well. He'd lay right back into you, but he didn't his brother, because he knew his brother telling him the truth. Right. 
Amen. So God has no such thing as casual believers. We're either in this or we're not in it. We're either on our way getting into it. Hey, are you helping me preach? Right. We've got to, we've got to have a desire to get into this Christian walk with God and become a disciple. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We've got to break away from the comfort zones that's in our life. Preacher, don't put anything else on me. I've already got all I can handle. If you'll give it over to God, it'll be a whole lot lighter anyway. Amen. He knows how to carry it better than you do. Yep. He knows how to deal with your problems better than you do. Yep. Right. Amen. I tell Brother Ewell, I don't mean to be open and stuff a bunch of stuff, but we went through some terrible times here for about 10 years. Especially Sister Esther and myself. And so we're struggling with it. The whole church struggling. Amen. Amen. And people that I thought were praying for me, that I called and said I need prayer. Then I found out they thought because I was calling them to help me pray that we weren't praying, you know. Amen. And I found out they were making fun of me behind my back. Amen. Amen. Are you helping me preach here? Amen. Well, I tried to put it on the Lord, and I did. And God's helped us. He's brought us through it. Amen. I said he's brought us through it. Somebody, I'm not charismatic, but somebody ought to say with me, he brought us through it. Amen. He's still taking us right on through. God's a big God today. Amen. So I have difficulty. It was even today. Now that God's moving, God's blessing. Woo! Amen. We'd like to come over and preach for you. Amen. You should have been helping me carry the load whenever we really needed you. Are you helping me preach? Amen. I'm telling you today, God has no place for casual uh, 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 Christians. Amen. But God wants you on the battlefield doing something for the glory of God. And if the battle, again, if the load gets too heavy, God, I need help carrying it. Praise God. Praise God. Acts 2 and 42. Luke said that they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine yep. and fellowship and prayers and breaking bed, bread. Yep. We are not commissioned to build institutions or start denominations. Nope. We, are, we are called to make disciples. Amen. Amen. A third grade preacher, an educated preacher. And I've said this before when we were studying Revelation. I read somewhere that the original manuscript, or, you know, some of the original uh, parts of the book of Revelation, they supposedly still have some of that. And they said the words were misspelled and like a third grader possibly wrote that. Amen. And uh, they questioned whether or not that it was original or not. And I said, that even makes it more so to me because John was doing the best he could with what he knew. When the angel said right, he wrote. Amen. And some day later on, when the translators began to translate it over into other languages, they had no problem telling that the word was misspelled. They knew what God said to the man. Amen. And I'm telling you today, it's the same thing for us. Let's carry it on. Amen. Now, let's just take my time just a little bit here. And look at what the Old Testament said. Talking about making disciples. Getting this message across. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Verse 1, Moses said, Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you, that you might do them in the land whither ye go to possess it. And let's look at verses 6 and 7. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shall talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. 
Verse 12, he went on to say, Then beware, lest thou forget the Lord, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt and from the house of bondage. Right. So it's a great thing to be converted. And that's what we're basically referring that to in our day of coming out of Egypt and out of bondage. We've come out of sin. Right. It's a great thing to be converted. But now let's get the knowledge of God and the knowledge of his words in our hearts and in our heads that we'll not forget where we come from. Right. Amen. Lest we go right back out and do the same things over and over and over. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. I'm telling you, God didn't save us in our sins. He saved us from our sins. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, moving on into the New Testament, we hear the Lord saying more than once, discipleship consists of self-denial. Amen. Amen. You can buy all kinds of books at the bookstore mm -hmm. or order them online on how to be happy. You can buy all kinds of books on how to prosper. I'm talking about in the Christian section. Yeah. You can buy all types of books. Amen. How to get the most out of God with the least effort. You help me preach here. You can buy them. Amen. And I'm here to tell you we've got to place the emphasis where Jesus placed the emphasis. And that's making disciples in the church's business. Amen. Amen. Praise God. That's maturing believers. Disciples who have been converted, amen, are now becoming mature enough that they can turn around and teach somebody else. It's not a matter of do's and don'ts in particular, especially when you first get saved. But I'm going to tell us today, if we stay saved, there are some don'ts. There are some thou shalt nots. There are some thou shalt not go. Amen. I don't have to preach it from the pulpit, but brother, if we get in tune with God just right, amen, you're going to find that Holy Ghost. Amen. Some prefer to say Holy Spirit. You're going to find him dealing with that heart. Say, stay away from that. Don't be saying that. Don't go there. Don't do that. Well, hallelujah. I'm about to feel pretty good here. Woo, glory to God. Make the disciples for Christ. Luke's Gospel, chapter 9, verses 23 through 27. Amen. Luke's Gospel, chapter 9, verses 23 and 27 through 27. And he said unto them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. And whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. For what is a man advantaged if he gain the whole world and lose himself or become a castaway? And then let's look on down to verse 57. And it came to pass that as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. And he said unto another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go bury my father. Right. And Jesus said unto him, Let the dead bury the dead, but thou but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. And another said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell, which are in home in my house. And Jesus said unto him, No man, having put his hand to the plow, and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. Oh. Three different people came to Jesus. Three different people wanted a place of recognition. Help me preach here. 
Three different people wanted the badge to wear. Three different people wanted to be counted as part of the number. But the problem with those three different people that Jesus already saw through and knew their hearts, they did not want to commit to the demands of discipleship. Now, whenever I'm talking about discipleship, I'm not talking about some crazy cult. No. I'm not talking about demands being made upon people or individuals by the church. But I'm talking about demands and being put upon us by the word of God. Amen. That we dig into and we find it. Yes. Now I've had this for quite some time to preach about to us. And each time I felt the Lord bid me not to. And I was digging into things to preach and see what the Lord would have me. Now, somebody might find fault with that, but if you don't study and dig in, I really don't want to hear you preach. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. That's a little bit harsh, but it's just the way it is. Amen. As I was studying and trying to dig in to find something, then every time I thought I had my finger on it, it just wasn't going to. Brother Hassel Carpenter said one time, I just couldn't get it to jail. But I got up this morning about 4 o'clock, began to talk to the Lord, and God directed me back to this passage of Scripture again. And so I believe it's time for us to look at the fact that we need to be disciples for the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Because no man taking hold of the plow and looking back at the same time, Jesus said, is not fit for the kingdom of God. Amen. Now, those old timers preached that to us whenever I was a boy. And I remember <coughs> Brother Mitchell, your papa, Oliver, and my dad having horses, yeah. mules, and ponies, good sized ponies, to plow with. Wow. I watched my uncle Lester, my mother's youngest brother, uh, uh, where we lived, we lived on another man's farm, and 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 Lester, uh, they paid him that hour to work for them. The guy had a tractor. He had a pretty good old international tractor. At that time, back in the 60s, he was relatively new. But Lester preferred not to plow with the tractor. I went over there one day, and there he was, had those two mules, and he was turning tobacco ground with the mules. I said, Lester, what's wrong with you? I said, that tractor, you can sit on that seat, and you can do that with a tractor and not have to follow these two mules. He said, you just don't understand it, son. This is the way I was taught to do it, and once you get that first row straight, the rest of it will fall right in place because the mules know where to go. Amen. I don't have to worry about things running out of gas. We fed them this morning, and they'll be just fine till this evening. Amen. Amen. And he worked there until he finally got another job somewhere else. Amen. And, and just kept right on using those mules. And I watched him. He knew just how to plow. And then and, and later on, when I got to gardening, I've never I've never done much plowing with the with anything. I took horses and and, and skid it out wood and bring it up and saw it up for the wood for the fire, but not for plowing. But I was having trouble, Brother David, laying off my garden. Amen. I'd have the crookedest rows in the county. Amen. And some of my neighbors would come by and he said, What are you trying to do? Get more in your garden? Amen. But dad was an old man and he was staying with us for a while. And he said, Son, that's not any problem to get your row straight. He said, look down at the other end of the row and set you a stick. And then you get down on the other end with your push plow, your little laying off plow by hand. He said, you look straight at that stick and don't look anywhere else and you'll have the straightest rows of anybody. Right. And I've still been doing that after Brother Don gave me a plow. Are you helping me preach? Right. Amen. I'm telling you, but you got to watch where you're going. You can't be looking back and got your mind on right. God at the same time. Amen. Can somebody help me preach? Right. Amen. We've got to have our affection set on things above. Amen. Yes. 
there's cost to follow Jesus. Amen. Well, he gave us the illustration of counting the cost. But everything that costs you, there's also compensation. Jesus is not going to take anything away from you without giving you something back that's much better. Amen. Right. Amen. Help me preach here a few minutes. I'm not meddling today. I'm just telling you what God done for me. All right. Amen. COPD runs in my family. I don't think my grandmother, my mother's mother, ever smoked anything in her life. But I mean, she had it bad. And they cooked with those little wood stoves. Her name was Nanny. And she coughed, and she coughed, and she coughed. And they think she was dying. One day her stepdaughter said, I, I think Nanny's got, got TB. And she said, we're going to go to Grandma was skinny anyway, just skin and bones. But she didn't. She had COPD. And it's been passed right on down. Brother Mitchell probably never took more than a puff or two off of one. And he's got COPD. A touch of it, don't you? And, uh, and some asthma. And so with all of those problems that was passed down through our family, from Grandma right on down through to us, and I've got it, whenever I got saved... Whenever I got saved, I quit drinking and I quit the tobacco habit, smoking Amen. at the same time. Now I'm gonna be straight honest with you. Amen. Amen. I've never quit chewing. Right. That's the nicest habit in the world. But I chewed three or four more years after that. And spit that stuff. Esther wouldn't sister Esther wouldn't let me do it in the house. But I I kept it where I could do that, you know. Yep. But I just hung on to that. Amen. But I quit it all said, why did God take that? I uh, want me to just give it up like that. Number one, it's hurt me. Right. Well, I probably wouldn't have been in for 15 minutes if I'd have kept on doing that. Right, right. And most of you wouldn't want to hurt me if you if you knew I was doing it. Are you helping me preach? Right. Hey, amen. Right. And some of you wish, well, I wish he was doing it because he wouldn't preach very long. But at any rate, I quit because God gave me my health instead. Right. 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 No, I'm not picking on you. Nope. Don't you think for a minute I'm picking on you. I want you to get a hold of God and let God talk to you about that. I'm saying what God did for me. Yes. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. So there's cost, but there's compensation. There is. Now one day Jesus was preaching in John chapter 6, verse 66. And many of his disciples, the scripture said, walk, went back and they walked with him no more. No more. He looked at disciples that he had left the ones he'd called and he said will you go away also and I believe it was Peter said or John right. Juan said you have the words to eternal life mm -hmm. the, 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 the demands became too great for them right yeah. and uh, you can't walk on both sides of the street at the same time uh -huh. so make them just some ready no more let's pray but I've used this illustration before, but I'm going to use it today because some of you haven't heard it. But several years ago, we used to go up to WLJC TV and I preached and the singers would sing. And we had free time. It didn't cost us a penny. Not a dime. And, uh, you know, you reach a lot of people there I was criticized for it and just hung up to dry but it is what it is I did it and I preached there and that's all I can say about it Sure. and I got annoyed so hang your head on that nail <laughs> amen but I used to work with a fella in the factory and he quit a long time before I did and he saw me there on that and uh, one day I got a call from him and he said he wanted to come to church and straighten his life up and uh, he didn't have any way to come and I said that's no problem and I knew if I went and got him I'd have to make two trips from Mervyn to here that's no problem. We've always done that. And uh, 
He said, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. He said, I've got some things I've got to straighten up first. And I said, get a hold of God first. And then let him help you straighten these things up as you go. Just come to God first. But I couldn't convince him. I don't know. A week or so, his sister she said, one week later, I got a phone call this time from his wife. She said, you talked to him the, a few days ago. Said, I remember. He's planning on coming to church. Are you ready? Is he ready to come? She said, no. She said, I found him dead in the bathroom this morning. Side of the bench we own this morning. Mm -hmm. We on God's side. Amen. We on you don't go straddle the fence with God. No. Because the devil's set right in the middle of it. Amen. He's got his self right in the middle of the fence. Amen. That's why he's got the middle of the fence. He's got his side too. Yep. So if we're gonna get on God's side today, folks, let's get all the way on it. Amen. Let's get all the way on it. Yes. And I'm not being harsh. I did not preach this to be I'm just telling you, God ain't playing games. No, no. Before the foundation of the world, the Father and the Son made a decision. Brother, you will have taught that just in Sunday school just a week or so ago. That when God said, let us, let us make man, he was talking to a triune Godhead. Man. And John's, you know, the Bible is a perfect example of being its own commentary. John said in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Right. So the Father and Son had a conversation after sin got scattered out through the portals of glory from Satan's footprints. They decided that man would be created Satan would be deceptive. You think about this. All pre-planned. And go down through the ages of time. And then God would send Jesus. Amen. After he sent the law. Yep. To be redeemer for your mankind. For your sin for mankind and for mine. And we're talking about God not playing games. No he's not. He's not playing games. Amen. So when he knocks at that heart's door and says, I want to come in, I want you to repent of your sins, and I want you to get right with me. He's not playing games. Come on. Brother Ewell's been going through it, and I go through it. The times of searching ourselves. Making sure, I've been watching you, watching Paul, making sure there's nothing fake about us. Woo, my God. Checking us. Because we're getting up here talking from here. Make sure there's nothing fake about us. Amen. Right. Amen. We know we're serving a God that ain't playing games, brother. No, sir. He's not in the game business. No, sir. He goes up for two points. If you want to talk about a game, he's not going to bounce off of somebody get a rebound. It's going through the net. Amen. Amen. It's that old house. Which side of the fence are you on today? I preached a long time. I usually don't preach for 20, 25 minutes. I'm not going to up here today. I'm talking to us. Let's make sure we're going to be disciples of Christ. <laughs> going to our own will. Oh, God, forgive me when I've failed you. Forgive us all, Lord. As we open this altar today, I want you to come. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus for the free part of your sins, hurry today and get right with the Lord. But if you know your sins have been under the blood and you're still struggling with issues, won't you let Jesus help you carry your load today? Because if it's 
too heavy for you, you'll need to carry it anyway. Come unto me all, ye that labor are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Come on, sing this song. Let's open this song. <coughs> 